Hi, thanks for joining me for another long range video. Well, this week uh, I'm flying the mountain that was across the valley from the one that I flew last week. And it's the same build that I'm flying. Uh, so when also last week I went over uh, covering the video system and talked a bit about the drone. But uh, one of the things I didn't talk about was the control link that I'm using. So my crossfire and transmitter. And also this week I'm using different batteries than I was last week. Because this week's flight I'm uh, going a little further out. It's a longer flight. So this time I'm using two 18650 6S packs. They're uh, made out of Molycell P28A cells. So there's our, these are 2800 milliamp hours each pack. For a total of 5,600 milliamp hours, that's 6S voltage. And uh, the control link that I didn't talk about last time. Uh, I always use a diversity receiver for my long range builds. So I've got a vertically polarized antenna in the back and a horizontally polarized antenna in the front. This just gives you the best chance of, no matter what the orientation of the drone is, you, just, you always have an antenna that's going to be at a good orientation for communicating back to your transmitter. It just makes it that much less likely to lose control link when you uh, happen to be pointing, say, the null tip of your antenna back home. This part of the antenna pointing out here doesn't has a very, very weak signal. So if you're behind some trees a few kilometers out and pointing your antenna like this back towards you, you could actually fail safe. But when you have the diversity antenna back here, this one will take over and give you a good strong signal back to the home point. And then if you're for some reason in this orientation with this antenna with its null point pointing back, then this one has a good strong signal because of its orientation going back to the home point. Uh, and on my transmitter, I'm still using my old x -Lite transmitter. I actually have a, uh, a Radio Master TX16S that I'm going to start using, but uh, I'm having an issue with the firmware and it's not, it doesn't feel right. I can't get it to feel right. So I'm still using this old thing for now. And it's got a TrueRC TrueMox 915 antenna on it. I usually will use that um, horizontally polarized like this when I'm flying long range. And uh, that's plugged into an, a, oh, I think this is the V2 of the Nano TX. So I believe it goes up to one watt, but I always fly with it set to uh, 500 milliwatts. I don't find I usually need more than that. Where, where I fly, there's no interference really. It's just the distance that I'm dealing with and, and some trees. So 500 milliwatts is, is plenty for, for how I fly or where I fly. Well, that's enough about gear for now. Let's get on to the long range footage and I'll uh, do some more talking after the flight gets started. The uh, Moly cell P28A uh, lithium ion cells that I was just showing you there, those um, 218650 packs, these are my favorite batteries to fly long range with. They're uh, 2800 milliamp hours for each pack, so the two of them together is 5600 milliamp hours. Uh, I find I can usually get a good about 5000 milliamp hours out of it, which that's usually enough to do most uh, most long range flights that I'm that I end up coming across. They're, uh, they're definitely lighter than using two of the 21700 packs. And uh, I think you definitely get more, uh, more amp draw performance or whatever you want to call it. You can pull more current from two of these than you can from one 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 pack. So I think these, these give me enough, uh, enough current to be able to uh, fight my way out of a strong wind if I happen to come across it and it gives you enough power to pull out of a dive without being too heavy. It's kind of the, the perfect sort of sweet spot for a, for a long range FPV battery. I actually just got some uh, Molycell P28B cells, which are pretty much the same as the P28As, except they I think they handle the cold a little bit better and they also put out a few more amps as well. So I'm looking forward to uh, making those packs and seeing how those fly. I might possibly do a video about that. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how, uh, how my spare time goes over the holidays. I really love flying uh, 
mountains like this, just going up the uh, these gullies or following the waterfalls, doing it at, at like eye level. So it's almost like you're hiking up, but really fast. This is one of my favorite parts of the flying long range FPV is just going and exploring up these different gullies and valleys up into the mountains. Here, this part, you can see I'm staying up higher in the air here. That's because uh, this ridge on the left that we're passing by cuts in front of my line of sight. So I have to get a little higher up there to be able to keep video clear through it. And I think I managed to get back down low again here soon. Yeah, or far enough away from that high part of that ridge back there and get back down now. So same as all my flights, I'm, uh, I'm flying at 800 milliwatts here uh, for my VTX as far as, you know, when I'm flying on analog. I don't think I've ever actually done a long range flight at anything higher than 800 milliwatts on the VTX. Uh, which brings to mind that uh, Jeff RC just asked me if I wanted to uh, try out their new, how do I pronounce it, Maten uh, VTX. It goes up to 2.5 watts. And I'm not sure I really need a whole bunch of extra wattage on my, uh, on my VTX, but I don't know, it might be nice for some of those flights where I get in behind trees and the video starts getting a little bit patchy. The extra power might punch through the trees and help me get a bit clearer of a signal for some of those flights. So I'm gonna give this uh, 2.5 watt Maten uh, VTX from Jep RC a try on my uh, Rad Lion build. Take it far out and get behind some trees or something and, uh, and see how this thing does. It's got a, a little mini fan on it and stuff for cooling, so it looks interesting. We'll uh, see how things go with that. All right, I finally made it up to the top of the mountain here. But now at this part, I'm, I'm trying to figure out which gully I wanted to fly down from the top. And I, I think this one here I'm looking at looks really cool. But now I'm turning back and checking and I don't think I have proper uh, line of sight to be able to get up in that side of it. So now I've come back and turned around and going to get at it. So I'm gonna give it a try going up the right hand side and not too sure about my uh, my line of sight for here and that's why I'm going kind of slowly. Oh there you can see I, I bailed out pretty quick. Yeah the line of sight didn't work out on uh, that side so going over to the left side now and uh, this one I, I think is the one I end up having some good some good clear view as I go up, or a good clear uh, video as I go up. Yeah, there I'm able to get nice back in close again to the little tiny waterfall. So this was in uh, the very beginning of July, so most of the snow had melted by now. This is actually from a, a long, a two week long kind of road trip that I took in the summer where I did just a whole bunch of long range flights and uh, I've got so much footage left over from this there's I can make videos all winter now with this with this amazing footage that I got over the summer and I think this is the last final bit of the ascent up the mountain here oh yeah there's a cool uh, cool gully going up the side Try that. But I think if I remember right, yeah, the video didn't work out going up there that gully that the rock outcropping on the right there was taking the video out. So I decided to just uh, take it straight on and uh, fly right up the face of the cliff here. Now normally I edit a bunch of this stuff out and just kind of make it a nice sort of flowing storybook edit. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd, it'd be interesting for you to see what the, uh, the whole flight is like when I don't chop out the parts where I'm looking around and trying to figure things out. And we're almost at the very top now. There you can see the sort of the view of the Alpine up there. If 
few other little peaks. And now the fun part. Trying to get in as close as I uh, feel safe doing at this rate of speed when video could get a little patchy every, at some random point. And it sure goes a whole lot faster going down than it does going up. I mean, I could fly faster going up, but I like going sort of slow and checking everything out and then doing the opposite and just ripping down fast for the way back. And here's where I have to get up in the air again a little bit. I don't, I can't get down behind that uh, ridge on the right that I'm just passing by. There we go. Now I can get back in tighter again and still have good view. Wow, and that's, that's almost the whole mountain already. That took no time at all to fly back down. That's probably, uh, you know, roughly 90 kilometers an hour, give or take 10 kilometers an hour for that whole way down. Because of course it's downhill, such a steep downhill that uh, it really doesn't take much from the battery. The battery is really more just uh, helping control and steer and gravity's doing a lot of the work for the speed. And we are uh, heading back home. This is where I parked just on the side of the road here to uh, fly up this mountain and then this gully we're looking at right there, that was that was where last week's video was. I think I can take another look up there. Yeah, that's that's where last week's video was. It was up that gully. And uh, that's it. Just coming back in for a, for a landing now. It really doesn't come across quite the same in the GoPro, but it's it's I just find it so much fun and it's so interesting just going and exploring up up, you know, whatever mountain you think looks interesting. Checking out the gullies and the, the waterfalls, it's always so beautiful when you get in close and, and look around and everything. All right, well, that's it for that one. Thanks for joining me for the video. I'll see you again next time.